everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on part 5 of our multi-part series where we're working on the golf cart behind me that I've named Meltdown. Today we're going to be working on some paint and some steering. I'm Jeff, welcome to Cart Crazy. Alright, if you've watched the first couple episodes of this series, uh, you'll realize that we actually got this thing running down the road, and running down the road very well, as a matter of fact. Uh, did get up to 20 miles an hour uh, with the little baby tires that are on it. I expect probably 21 or 22 once we put a little uh, taller tire on it. And uh, going to have a lot of fun finishing this one up. Unfortunately, parts are kind of hard to get right now. I did scramble around and got most of what I need, a little bit still on back order. But we'll get there. we got a lot to do before we can uh, get to uh, putting the body and stuff on anyway. So uh, today I'm going to go ahead and tear out everything that I've done here um, because this was all temporary. Didn't want to stick a lot of time into it until I could make sure this thing went down the road. So we're going to pull all this wiring apart. Probably won't mark anything. That way I can be frustrated when I go to put it back together. And then the other thing I wanted to do, and I showed you in previous episodes, the steering is super sloppy and nothing's moving down there and it's in this gearbox down here um, uh, everything's basically wore out I guess it's pretty common on these older ones so I went ahead and splurged a little bit got a brand new unit um, it wasn't too terrible actually a couple hundred bucks and uh, for what this cart's gonna be when we're done it'll be money well spent so uh, we're gonna go ahead and swap that out today Probably going to get it out and do a little more pressure washing just because I did miss some grease and stuff on here. May have to get the wire brush in there and clean that up a little bit. Finish pressure washing, then we can go ahead and uh, spray it down. I use this MRO paint. Um, my local bolt and screw supply store had this and I was kind of asking about it and he said the stuff is awesome and I said, well, I'll give it a try. And uh, I really like it. It says four, four cans in one and uh, that is absolutely true. I could just about probably do this whole frame on one can or maybe a little more. Um, it goes a long, long way. It goes on really good. It sticks really good. I'm just really happy with it. So really, you don't have to go and paint your frame and do all that because it all gets covered up anyway, but uh, I'm a little over the top on stuff like that, and uh, if somebody's going to spend a lot of money on this, I don't want them to crawl underneath and see rust or, you know, things that can be covered up like right there. That, you know, it's surface rust. It's not hurting anything, but why not Give it a quick shot of paint. So anyway, lots to do before we get there. I got to pull the wiring out. Um, all these rivets that uh, I drilled out that weren't all the way through, they're kind of all over the cart here. Those all got to be punched through completely so that when we go to reassemble everything, it'll go together real good. So let's start by tearing the wiring out and then we can get it up and uh, do some more painting and cleaning. Alright, so I went and pulled all the electronics off, um, just the one harness left there from um, for the pedal switch, which is underneath there. We'll just kind of throw those on the floor for now and um, pull some of these other ones out of our way. But, uh, got the Finger Slicer 9000 out, if you can remember the last time I used that. Uh, about sent myself to the hospital for stitches, so I think we're going to go ahead and throw the gloves on before I use it this time instead of after the first time and uh, maybe prevent that a little bit. So I'm just going to buzz through this, try to clean up as much of this as I can. We're not going to get in real particular just because a lot of those nooks and crannies I'm not going to be able to get to. Might hit those with the wire brush or the die grinder, but give it a little shot here and see what happens. Okay, I'm not sure how much of that you saw. The memory card was full and I didn't realize it, of course, and just kept going. But uh, got it stripped down, wire brushed, um, gonna run it outside. I got the, uh, the motor taped off, the parts I don't want paint on. I guess I could have waited till after I pressure washed for that. But um, gonna give it one more pressure wash, get some more grease off, and uh, clean up the floor a little bit. You can see all the debris that came off from. Um, 
blasting away on this thing. Probably doesn't show up real well on the camera, but yeah, there is a ton of rust and stuff that came off, so that's good. Let me uh, get it outside, give it uh, one more quick wash. We'll pull it back in. We'll change that gearbox out. Really glad I did that for a couple of reasons. Uh, it was a lot dirtier than I thought it was, and you know, I needed a shower anyway, so it kind of all worked out. Um, let me spin it around and show you what we got. So, probably doesn't look a whole lot different on camera, but uh, these shafts were full of grease, or uh, shafts, yeah, tie rod ends, there we go. We're all full of grease, and uh, up in where I'm working, had a bunch of mud where we got to get that gearbox out. Um, got this aluminum plate cleaned up a little more. There was a bunch of grease packed in that axle housing that I missed last time, so I got that cleaned out. And was able to actually blast some of the rust off that I had knocked loose um, with the wire wheel and stuff. Uh, I was able to knock it loose with the pressure washer. So let's dive into this front end here quick. I don't think it's too terrible. Looks like three bolts on the column and a couple of bolts, maybe three holding the whole unit in. Of course your tie rod ends and that's probably about it. That unit comes pretty much fully assembled. Um, still in the bag here but obviously tie rod ends will go in there and uh, Steering column bolts and these three bolts. I don't know if you can see that with the glare, but probably should take it out of the bag. There we go. Three bolts for the column. Doesn't look too bad, so let's dive in. Thought I'd show you where I'm at. Um, three bolts around the column. Where are those three bolts there? <clears throat> And then uh, down inside, there's a separate shaft, which is actually your, you know, your steering shaft. That one is held with a little pinch bolt there. Uh, this outer sleeve is basically decoration. Um, and then what we're going to do under here, uh, one, two, three bolts. That should drop the whole assembly out. We've got our tie rod ends. Now before you go wailing on these and mess your threads all up, where you can't get your nut back on. If you don't have a uh, pickle fork handy, what you can do, and I don't know if it'll work one-handed for me or not here, but probably not. Hit on the side. That one popped free. Hit on the side where that bolt goes through and that'll kind of shock it. camera down. I can't get a good swing, so hang on. Got that one to pop free. I did miss a little bit with the hammer and just nicked the threads, but I should be able to clean that up with a thread chaser. Goodness gracious, that thing weighs about as half as much as the whole frame does right now. Uh, one more hidden bolt, well not hidden, in plain sight bolt uh, on this side. So there's actually four, three from that side, one from this side. Drop the whole assembly out. Looks pretty cruddy, it's got a lot of miles on it, a lot of slop in there. Um, mainly in this bushing right here, which probably could have just replaced that one bushing, but for the grief and aggravation of everything, trying to find parts and all that, it was just as easy to grab a new assembly. So I'm going to let this drip off a little more, and uh, probably going to shoot some paint down here while this is all apart, just so I don't get paint on the nice new steering box assembly. 
that's all nice and shiny there's no sense in painting that up so we'll let that dry get some paint on there and see what we got well I got a bunch done off camera here I got the uh, steering box in and that thing fought me like a mean rooster I mean every which way I had it in and out probably four or five times and um, you could get two of the three bolts lined up this one they actually didn't thread they put a where you drop a bolt with a nut all the way through and that's fine but um, I ended up having to auger out this one a little bit bigger and this one up here a little bit bigger because I could twist it and turn it but I could only get two to line up at a time so just be aware of that but boy did it stiffen up this steering I mean it is nice and firm and I'm talking $99 mattress from Big Lots firm it's there's no slop in it anymore as soon as I turn the wheel steering wheel the tires moving so really happy with that touched it up with some paint and got the uh, Got the old GTWs back on there. Uh, those you probably remember from uh, the red Easy Go that I did. I ended up trading the guy back for some different wheels. So I thought I'd put him on this cart, but it's coming together. And uh, in the next episode, hopefully, I get enough parts together uh, and they're off back order that we can uh, get the battery in and maybe some of the body components on. I've got something really exciting coming up with the battery on this guy. Um, can't wait to tell you all about that. But thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you like what you see. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on Cart Crazy.